I made this. It is a 6x17 camera and it took these pictures. Let me tell you why I did this and how I did it. Hey folks, welcome back to another 3 Amigas video. Today's video is going to be slightly different from our usual one. This one is going to be a series out of three. And the reason being is because I'm making my own camera. It's going to be a 6x17 camera and I've never done this before. So let's dive into why I'm doing this. So as some of you know, I shoot with 35 film as well as large format like 4x5 up to 8x10. And film photography always has certain appeal to me, not only because of how simple the process is in terms of, you know, what a photographer is trying to capture. You have a negative and you develop and that's your picture. Nowadays, with the evolution of technology, things got more complex. And I feel like people lose the experience of the actual film photography creativity. And I wish things were simpler at times. And that's why I have my film cameras when I want simpler things. And I always wonder if it's possible for me to actually make my own camera. And that's why I decided to research about it, try to share my experience with you guys as well along the way and find out what are the challenges and what went smoothly in this process. So yeah, that's why. Why now? It's because there's a trip that is coming up in September, a trip to Italy for Stantis pre-wedding shoots. And for me, I think I won't use that camera for the actual shoot itself, but I do feel that I want to capture the Italian landscape in the most panoramic fashion. And a 6 by 17 is going to be epic. I do think that the, the pictures that I would be able to get out of it to be amazing, just because you know, of the research I've done, of the spots, it's really worthwhile to have a panoramic camera there. I've tried to make a 3D camera before using uh, open source designs that are done by talented people. And I'll share the links below for those 3D cameras that I, I attempted previously. For me, it didn't work out very well just because of the lens that I'm using and I, I needed to do some tweaks and I wasn't able to do that. And I'll, I'll dive into a bit more what, what their problems were with those designs that I attempted for my lens. So what's the plan? I think with anything, uh, the start point is the research. So I need to research about image circle to determine what lens I want to use and as well as understanding the flange distance of that lens. So I'll be covering a bit about the concepts that I need to be aware of, that I feel that I need to know in order to actually continue with the project. So starting with the image circle, the image circle, it's nothing more than the projected image to the negative or to the sensor. In my case, to the negative. So I'm looking for a lens that is able to cover at least 170 millimeters. You can imagine the film is a rectangle and the image projector is a, is a circle. So with that diameter, you need to make sure that you have enough coverage for the 170 millimeters. And in my case, I, I need to ensure that because I want to make a six by 17 camera. Flange distance. And this one is probably the trickiest based on my experience from my 3D printed large format cameras. Again, I explained that I had some issues with my lens is because the flange distance, it's where you determine the infinity focus, meaning the distance of the lens to the film or to the sensor determines the ability of the lens to capture the infinity focus. And for my large format cameras, 3D printed, I couldn't manage that because the mount that I had had a bit of a, a distance that was not meant for my lens and I couldn't get the infinity focus because of that, even though I tried to tweak a little bit, but I couldn't get it very accurately. So this time around, I want to be more precise. I want to be able to actually design the camera with my lens in mind so that I can ensure infinity focus and I can actually also make close focus uh, possible with this camera as well. This page is extremely useful because it has the list of large format lenses and their corresponding image circle as well as their flange distance. This is actually very useful if you're designing your, your camera just because you need to 
adjust the measurements accordingly. So in this case, I sorted the flange distance by the, the lowest. And I'm trying to look at the lens that has the image circuit the at least of 170 millimeters for the 6x17. And in this case, the rolling stock Grandagon meets that criteria and is a 65 millimeters, which is the lens that I have. I'll be sharing the link of this page in the description. So do have a look if you're also designing your camera so that you make sure you have the corresponding measurements. Talking about focus, I do want to improve on that from my previous experience on the large format prints is that I want to make sure that it's more robust. Previously, it's a 3D design that is more or less like helicoid. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. The helicoid basically allows you to push the lens forward and backwards. And I do want to get a more robust one. So I ordered one from eBay, but you can get it from Amazon as well. Hopefully that will allow me to give the distance that I need for close focus at least and as well as infinity focus. So with these three key areas, I determined which lens I wanted to get, as well as what flange distance I want to have for my design. Because as you can imagine, if the distance is 70 millimeters, that means the, the, the camera itself has to have uh, the lens 70 millimeters away from the film back, and that is gonna protrude quite a bit. And I want to make sure that the camera is portable enough. Knowing that I'm starting my designs and coming up with prototypes so that I can actually see if this is something that is feasible, what works, what doesn't. I, for example, never done hinges on my 3D designs and this is the first time I'm attempting it. So hopefully I can open and close the door for the film loading aspect. But other than that, the prototype phase is literally just to work out the, the different features that I want the camera to have. What is the position of, of the knobs that I will have for the film winder as well. So these are examples that I want to achieve on a prototype at home with my 3D printer. But eventually, once I have the design finalized, I'll go into JLC. That's not sponsored, but it's a company that I use for my final prints. Once I know the prototypes are more or less what I want, that I ship them to is able to print the design in a more professional fashion than my home 3D printer. And I can then test it fully and see what else is missing. This will be in multiple iterations. Um, that's the process that I normally go for. But if you have a better approach, do let me know. I think this will be a long journey. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be part one of three, hopefully three and not more. At the moment, I've shipped the designs to, to them and I'll wait for the prints to actually come back to me and, and see the results. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's slightly different, as I mentioned, than the other videos. But if for people that are curious about how a camera is made, especially in today's world where you have access to 3D printers very easily. You could technically attempt this at home as well. If you want to be in tune with the upcoming videos as well, make sure you subscribe and give us a like if you like this kind of video as well. Catch you in the next one.